First we're going to start off with a basic rotation transition. What I've done here is a zero value, 90, minus 90, and then zero again. And then I've also added motion tile with mirrored edges to hide the black behind the clip. So it's been applied to both clips, that's the motion tile acting right there. So this is, this is what it looks like at the moment. It looks pretty crap, I actually hate it. So <laughs> the first thing that I want you to do to change this is we're going to apply motion blur. Motion blur is just adding blur to whenever the, um, the clip moves and it adds more blur if there is more movement. To add motion blur, we're going to click the circle symbol right here. This applies motion blur for the whole comp, but we want it to be applied to our individual clips. So let's go to the over here, which also has the same symbol and checkbox it just like that. And I hope you can already see the difference, but this is what it looks like without motion blur and with motion blur. Um, there's an issue with adding motion blur that I see in a lot of edits is that even though I've put this keyframe right at the end of this clip, if I go to it, there's no more motion blur. There's motion blur here, and then all of a sudden the motion blur just disappears, and then it goes to the next clip. You can kind of see it when you play the video, and it doesn't look good. Basically, the reason why it's doing this is because there's actually no more movement happening afterwards, and so After Effects thinks you don't need motion blur here. So what we're going to do is actually move this past the last frame. We're going to move this keyframe to the next frame. Like this keyframe is actually the start of this clip. So now the motion blur has returned. Yay, cool. The next thing we're gonna do is make it so that we can change the speed of the rotation at particular points of time. At the moment, every single frame where this clip is rotating, the speed that it is doing so is at the exact same value. It, it's not changing at all. What we wanted to do is to start off moving slowly and then we want it to increase in speed as it goes to the end of the clip. And then for this clip we want it to be increased in speed and then slow down. So how we change this is we're going to highlight the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. This allows us to edit the graph editor and this here is the graph editor. Click this. If your graph doesn't look like what mine looks like right now, Press this and click edit value graph. Now at the moment the graph is signifying that it begins slowly in this section and then it speeds up and then it slows back down. This is going against what I said where I wanted to just slow down at the start and then speed up. So we're going to change it accordingly. Move this handle downwards. See how it now speeds up there because the slope is steeper. And then this handle here, we're going to move it forwards. Now when you move this handle, I want you to hold shift so that it locks onto the zero value here. Because I don't want you to accidentally go below zero, okay? So let's hold, hold shift and move it forward. Our graph now looks like this. And we're going to do the same thing for the other graph but reverse. We're going to have it fast at first and then it's going to slow down. So highlight it. Keyframe assistant, easy ease, graph editor. It's going slow, fast, slow. We're gonna change it so it's fast and then slow. This is what the rotation looks like at the moment. It's pretty quick, but it definitely looks a lot better. Um, something that's really bothering me here is that there, th this, whole, this whole section is completely static. There is no movement and then it suddenly decides to rotate. And it's the same for this clip. It has movement, and then it goes to completely still. If this was in a full edit, this would completely ruin the flow of the edit, and in order to increase smoothness, we want to increase the flow. Now, to avoid this, we want it so that the clip is always moving. For edits, if you want to increase your flow, you have to make it so the edit itself always looks like it's moving, and that there's no moments where the camera is just suddenly still and static. So how we solve it for this rotation transition is simply just spread the keyframes out. Just like this. This keyframe has gone from here to the end of the clip and this has gone all the way to the start of the clip. Now this has consequences. Our graph has changed because we've moved the keyframes out. 
Also, this actually looks smoother than before. This actually looks a lot better. But yes, our graph has changed and we want to change it back to how it was. So let's go to the graph editor and see how this has become so much steeper. Keep that in mind when you move your keyframes or, move, or change your keyframe values is that it will change your graph every single time. So I'm just going to move that a little bit back to how it was before. Same with this one. Move it back to how it was before. One last thing is that I don't like how the rotation is not rotating fully. These values are quite low. This is at minus 90 and this is at 90. But remember that we move this keyframe forward. So the last frame is actually at plus 50. And basically, if you look at the outline here of the clip, it's not doing a full... Oh, sorry. It's not doing a full rotation. It looks... I, I don't like it like that. So... This is what I do with my edits, is I make the values pretty large. So we're going to put this all the way down to minus 180. And then for this clip, I'm going to put it at 220. So the fact that I've changed the values by, you know, increasing it means the graph has changed yet again. This has, you know, this has become a lot smaller here. So I'm going to move it back out. And for this one, this has also become smaller, so I'll move it back out. Let's have a look at the rotation now. There you go. It's much bigger. I like it like this. But I'm going to teach you a little trick, which won't make sense at the moment, but it will make sense when I add more clips to our edit. Let's go to this clip, and for this keyframe, instead of making it end at zero, let's overshoot it. Let's go a little bit above zero. Only a little bit, don't add too much. I don't want it to go to five, it's going to five. Let's move that down a tiny bit. So this is what the rotation looks like at the moment. And yes, I know the overshoot isn't making sense, but I'll show you later what it will do. Okay, so now we're gonna do a simple scale and transition. This is what it looks like right now. Pretty bad, hate it a lot. First thing we're gonna do is turn on motion blur, put it on the clips as well. Motion blur is not applied to last frame, so we're going to spread the keyframe out. Then we're going to highlight, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Highlight, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Go to the graph editor, make it so that it's slow at first, and then it becomes fast. So fast. Go to this one. We're going to make this one fast at first, and then slow down. This is how it looks at the moment. It's better, but I'm really annoyed by how it zooms and just stops, just like that, it just stops. So we're gonna spread our keyframes out so that the clip is always moving, it's always zooming. Um, now we're gonna change our values because it's not actually zooming in that much at all. And just like with the rotation, I increased the values to make it so it moves a lot more. Uh, I'm gonna put this down to 40. You can put it down to whatever you like. And for this one, see how the last frame it's at 118 even though my value here is at 150 so just keep that in mind that it's going to be lower than whatever you put here i'm going to change this to 250. let's see how it is not too bad but it's kind of obvious that our graph has been changed because i spread the keyframes out and i changed the values so let's change the graph back to how i want it to be oh this has really gone back jeez put that all the way over there there you go simple scaling pretty cool okay so the reason why I did that scale and transition is because I've added all the clips together into one I guess mini edit now I want to address an issue here what if we have this clip zoom out and what are we gonna do with this clip if we've already added scale and we want it to start and zoomed in go zoom out and then zoom back in what do we do if I've or I, I've told you to move this keyframe all the way to the end here so how do we go about this there's two methods. The first one I want to show you is to use the transform effect. So go to your effects and presets and type transform. Drag that onto the clip and do your usual scale out. I'm just gonna easy ease, graph. Okay, done. The reason why that I've, I've put the keyframe in the middle here instead of dragging it all the way out to the end is because we have two motions happening at once. This motion here is telling the clip to zoom in. This motion here is telling the clip to zoom out. If I put this all the way to the end, it's not gonna zoom out enough. We're not gonna see enough of the picture. It's 
it never zooms out completely. But the reason why it's okay to put this in the middle here is because of these keyframes here are already making the clip constantly move. I'm like the reason why I tell you to spread the keyframes out is because I want the clip to be constantly moving so that the flow is okay. But yeah, we already have it constantly moving, so it's fine to put this keyframe in the middle here. It doesn't look too bad, but honestly, there's also another method which I prefer to use, and I'll show you that as well. So let's get rid of this transform. The other method is going to sound pretty whack at first, but see how I end it at 250? What if I made it start at 250 instead of 100? Okay, this sounds a bit wacky, but let's go to the, key fr the graph editor. And let's make this graph so that it goes all the way down to 100. Uh, 100 lines just here. Let's make it just touch 100. And make it so that it touches 100 about the middle there. Make it so it's symmetrical. I'm going to move this a little bit. There you go. So this is what it looks like. I think that's better, but it's up to you what you want to use. And it's also kind of cleaner because I'm not overlapping a bunch of keyframes. It's just as one set here. So let's go back to the thing where I told you to overshoot the rotation here. Now when we connect all of these clips together, it doesn't actually connect that well because these clips are constantly tilted while these clips remain vertical. So tilted, vertical. And what editors like to do to kind of make the whole thing always tilted is to add something called wiggle. You may have heard of it, but um, what I prefer to do is to actually manually add little rotations. So this clip, we made it so that it overshoots into a positive region, see how it's above the zero line. So we're going to make it so this clip starts at a positive value. So let's keyframe the rotation, let's put the zero value all the way to the end there, and I'm going to make it positive at a small number. Just keep it small, don't put it at anything above 10. Let's easy ease and watch it now. See how it kind of connects these two clips together a little bit? And now this clip is completely vertical compared to all of them now. So what I'm going to do is make it so this value, instead of making it end at zero, let's make it end at a negative value. And then for this clip, let's start at negative value and go back to zero. Remember the easies. Let's watch it. There you go. All the clips are more connected now. This, in my opinion, has improved the flow compared to what it was before. And um, yeah, by improving flow, you're improving the smoothness. And these are all my tricks that I have up my sleeve. I really hope you enjoy this tutorial and thank you for watching.